Hello, welcome back to Inside Copeland. I'm Ben Picker. In today's episode, we're going to look at the Copeland Outdoor Condensing Unit, otherwise known as the X-Line. This unit has been recently updated and re-released in October of 2016. It has a lot of improvements made to it, which address some serviceability issues that contractors said that they would like to see with it. So let's take a look at the new Copeland X-Line. So as you can see, the new X-Line condensing unit still uses the same chassis that the original unit does. What we've done with it though, is you can see it has a new hinged door on the unit, which makes it easier to get into the unit and service the unit. So the unit still maintains all the same installation flexibility that the original unit does. You only need about eight inches on the back of the wall and about 20 inches around all the other sides. All right, so the service connections are still on the outside of the unit. We have a standard 7 8 connection for the suction and a half inch connection for the, for the liquid. The valves are accessed by taking off the external caps. So the suction line uses an eight millimeter Allen key to open. Make sure you use a good quality tool when you're using it. The cheap ones have a tendency to bend uh, because there is quite a bit of torque on those valves. On the liquid line, use a five millimeter key. Now in both of these cases, there is a dry air charge. So just be aware that when you do open the valves, there will be a very loud noise as the air escapes from the unit. The other connections on the unit is on the side, there's two knockouts that allow for the electrical connections. You may or may not need to use both of the connections. Uh, that will depend on whether you use defrost or not and what size wires need to go to the unit. So when you connect the unit, the unit does need to be connected in accordance with your local zoning laws. So you do need to connect it to a disconnect, which usually has to be either line of sight or within six feet of the unit. Be sure you follow the local zoning laws. To get into the unit, there's a quarter turn lock on the door. You just use a simple flathead screwdriver. You can open the door. Now the door is removable, so you can remove it from the hinges just by disconnecting the wire. Because the door is hinged, you can remove it and set it off to the side. This can be beneficial in windy situations where perhaps the, the door might swing around. You wanna move it so it doesn't you know, perhaps hit you. Taking a look inside the unit, you can see we've updated the control module. We've removed many of those old circuit boards that were in the unit. It makes it a lot cleaner and easier to use. The control does everything that the old boards did, but all in one module. There's also a circuit breaker in there that protects the module. We still retained the contactor and we moved all of the connection points down to one central terminal block. Looking down in the compressor compartment, we do have a filter dryer that's in there. We also have a sight glass that's in, in the unit as well. Those are all insulated on the low temp models as you see here. All right, so taking a look at the connection terminals that are in the unit, we've moved them all into one location so it's all together now. On this particular unit, you see this is a three phase unit. So we have your typical L1, L2, and L3 where you make your power connections. There's also the ground uh, for the ground connection. Next to that, you can also see that we have the defrost connections. Now these are the same as what you would see on a typical mechanical defrost clock. We have your three, four, N and X connections on this, on this terminal block. So the wiring is exactly the same as you would on a traditional mechanical clock. So these terminals that we use on the unit are a spring cage type terminal. All you need to do is take a screwdriver and insert it into the terminal and then put a stripped wire into the wire connection and pull out the, the screwdriver. The wires will stay in there. So there's no need to add any type of eyelet or other type of termination to the wires. It's a very simple connection. You do this for all, all the wires on the unit. The defrost connections work the same as the other connections. You put the screwdriver in, insert the wire, and then remove the screwdriver and the wires will stay. So once all the power connections are made, now you can turn on power to the system. So go ahead and flip the 
breaker on. And when we go back to the unit, you'll see that the control will go through a startup procedure. It'll show the firmware version and the history of the software, and then it'll get into its startup phase. As you can see here, it's flashing an alarm code. This L21 means that the phases of the power are reversed. If you look on the door panel, you'll see that L21 means that the phases are reversed. So all we need to do is go ahead and switch these wires around. So to do that, we need to cut off the power to the unit and then we can change the wires. Once the wires have been switched around, go ahead and reapply power to the unit. So now that the error has been corrected, now the unit can be programmed. So to program the unit, it's really a three simple steps. Number one, you need to set the real-time clock. After that, you need to set the parameters of the unit, which are like your cut-in and your cut-out, um, and your refrigerant. After that, then your defrost settings. You can choose whether to have the defrost enabled or disabled. So really just three simple steps to do that. In order to program the control, it operates like any other Dixel controls that you might be familiar with. In order to enter the programming menu, you simply use the set button and the down arrow button and you hold those for about three seconds and that will enter you into the programming mode. The first thing you'll see will be RTC. This is for the real-time clock. So in order to get into the real-time clock menu, go ahead and hit the set button to get into that menu. So once you're in the real-time clock menu, now you'll be able to set things like the, the minute, hour, and the, the day. So the first parameter that comes up is minute. So go ahead and hit the, the set button to enter that parameter, and then use the up and down arrow buttons to adjust the time hit set to accept it. Do the same thing for hour. Hit set button to enter the hour parameter and use the up and down arrow buttons to set the time. Now the time is in 24 hour time, so anything that's above 12, you just subtract 12 to get the time of day. So 17 means 5 p.m. After you set the time, now you can set the day this is the day of the month, so whatever the day is, just set it. Use the up and down arrow buttons to set that. Finally, then you have the month. After the month, of course, you set the year. After the time has been set, just hit the set button and the up arrow button just by pressing them one time. That will take you from the real-time clock menu back down into the main programming menu. The other menu that's within the, the main programming menu is the parameter. This is where you can set your cut in and cut out and your refrigerants. So select parameter and then hit set. The first parameter that will come up is the CIN. This is your cut in uh, setting. So use the up and down arrow buttons to select whatever cut in pressure you like to see with the system. Once you have that, press the set button to accept it it'll automatically move to the cutout parameter. Again, use the up and down arrow buttons to set the pressures that you want the cutout to be. After the cutout is the refrigerant. On these units, you do need to select a refrigerant for the unit to operate. In this case, we'll use 404. After the refrigerant is done, now you can move into the defrost settings. So the EDF parameter is the parameter used to set what type of defrost you want. So hit the set button, you'll see not used comes up. This means that defrost is turned off. You have the option to either use this control for defrost or you can use a different control. The other options that exist are real-time clock, which allows you to set an actual time of day. So if you want the defrost to happen at 6 a.m. and 5 p.m., you can set those values with this menu. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. To set those particular time of day defrost, use the LD1 through LD6 parameters. On LD1, this one sets the, the first defrost time. So the time of day can be set in 10 minute intervals. So we can set it here to 5.30. The order in which you enter the times into LD1 through LD6 doesn't matter. You can put 
6 a.m. as LD1 and you can have 2 a.m. as LD2, the control is automatically going to put those in the correct order. So now that you've set the clock and the parameters and the defrost, the unit is ready to go.